This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with the disciples and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and with a great multitude of people from all of Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that's what they did, that's what their ancestors did to the prophets. But watch out, you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Watch out, you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Watch out if you are laughing now, for you will weep. Watch out when people speak well of you, for that's what they did, that's what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. Sorry about that little interruption, but I just wanted to make sure that I was reading this text in the right spirit today. Sometimes we have a tendency when we read scripture, especially the difficult parts of scripture, to just assume that they were written for and about other people. And it doesn't help today that our gospel text sets up such a dramatic polarity. It gives us the rich and the poor, the hungry and the satisfied, those who weep and those who laugh. Automatically, those contrasts draw our minds to the far ends of the spectrum. And that's not where we feel like we live, so these texts must be about other people, right? And having decided then that these teachings apply to an unspecified group that's definitely not us, it becomes easier to either romanticize or demonize whoever we think these texts might be about. The blessed become a sanitized version of the world's poor, noble and pure. And Jeff Bezos, with his yacht that's so big that it can't even fit under a bridge, he becomes a symbol of all that's wrong with the world. So good for you, poor people. Woe to you, Jeff. This Jesus stuff is easy, right? But in reality, this text isn't just a lesson for and about the desperately poor and the ultra-rich. It's for and about me. And it's for and about you. It's for and about all of us here and everyone who's online. In our gospel text this morning, in a section that we call the Sermon on the Plains, we meet Jesus at a level place where he stands with a crowd of his disciples and a multitude of people from all over. The text says that people had come to hear Jesus and to be healed by him. And everyone in the crowd was trying to touch him because power came out of him and healed them all. That's such a unique phrase that our text uses. It's almost as if Jesus is just radiating healing. And anyone who comes near him or anyone who hears what he's saying or stands in his presence, they're just automatically healed. It's no wonder the crowds around him were so large because we're all in need of healing in some way, whether we know it or not. And that's why reading a text like this in the mirror can be so helpful. When we realize that the Sermon on the Plain actually does apply to us, then we take a step towards Jesus and his healing power. While it may be easy to just see the desperately poor and the ultra-rich in the polarities of this text, if you think about it, at one time or another, we are, all of us, the things that Jesus mentions here. There are times in our life when we are all poor. It might be financial poverty, but it might be other kinds of poverty as well. 
Maybe we are poor in spirit, as it says in the Gospel of Matthew. Or maybe we're in poor health. Or maybe our poverty looks something like loneliness because we're poor in friendship or connectedness. Jesus says even in our poverty, we are part of the kingdom of God. We belong there. We're not cast out or disqualified or uninvited because we are poor in some way. Rather, we are an integral part of God's dream for the world. And in the same way, we all experience hunger, sometimes literal, literal hunger, but we can be hungry for other things as well. We can hunger for love, for connection, for forgiveness. We can be hungry for justice. And Jesus says, if you are hungry, you will be filled. We all weep. We all have been rejected. And Jesus assures the crowd that in each of these experiences of hardship, the pain will eventually come to an end. He tells those who suffer that there are better days ahead. And just as we all experience times of trial, so too we all experience times of plenty. We may not have ridiculously large yachts that can't fit under bridges, but we are all rich in some way. We eat until we are full. Sometimes we laugh. And someone somewhere thinks well of us. The woes in the Sermon on the Plain remind us that in those moments of plenty, we need to watch out. We need to make sure that we don't become blinded by our good fortune. We need to make sure that we don't become so proud of ourselves or so privileged that somehow we lose sight of God and our place as workers in God's kingdom. In our first reading from the book of Jeremiah, the prophet warns us not to put our trust in mere mortals or in the strength of the flesh, but to trust in God. That way the prophet says we will not fear when the heat comes and we will not be anxious in the drought. In other words, when things fall apart, as they inevitably do, we won't fall apart. Because we know where our help and our strength comes from. It comes from the Lord. Life is full of ups and downs. We all experience good times and bad times, plenty and want, joy and sorrow. It's important to remember that no matter where we find ourselves at any given moment, that we belong to God that we are God's beloved, and that God walks with us no matter where we are. We are beloved children of God in times of plenty and in times of want, when we are laughing and when we are crying, no matter what. And as such, we are called to love God, serve God, love all, serve all, no matter what, in times of plenty and in times of want. When we trust in the Lord, when we recognize our connectedness to God and our call to care for one another, no matter what, then the changing circumstances in our life don't alter what is fundamentally true about us, that we are God's beloved and workers in God's kingdom. I have no trouble believing that healing power just flowed freely from Jesus to the people in the crowds, because that's still happening today. Maybe not in the same way, but in important ways nonetheless. And if we read a text like the one that we have today in a mirror, if we can hear that the promise is for us and the warning is for us, then we can remember that in all of life's ups and downs, we belong to God. And then we can see for ourselves who God loves. Thanks be to God.